Chung truly understands the value of everything he collects. A collector of toys, industry memorabilia, as well as anything to do with Hong Kong's unique culture and history, Joel has, over the years, managed to amass a collection of roughly 20,000 toys. He used to think that collecting toys somehow made up for a lost childhood, but this all changed when he met the renowned Japanese toy collector, Terahisa Kitahara. Uh, he asked me uh, what I can saw in his museum uh, or in his space. Uh, I can saw all the toys is made in Japan. Then that's the key point he told me. Because this uh, his own history, because he his respect his own history, his own country, his cultural, uh, all is belongs to him. Because he is Japanese, and then he collects all his Japanese toys. So uh, I think after this conversation, I have much more clear what I need to do when I back to Hong Kong. Another collector told me uh, it's not worth to doing this because you keep the Japanese toys, Germany toys is much more valuable. You go to keep those uh, Hong Kong toys because in, in that moment, the Hong Kong toys is really, really is a cheap thing. Uh, but I, I told him, ah, that's all my love, so I want to change it. Uh, so I think that uh, Kitahara is very, very, very important to change my uh, and inspire me to focus in my own history. Joel's studio looks like a museum of old Hong Kong, with all manner of toys and artwork displayed on the walls and carefully packed away in boxes. He is disappointed with how Hong Kong culture and history is currently looked after. Uh, of course, I really want to, uh, to create or inform uh, our own toys museum or gallery, no matter. Because this is very important f uh, for our next generation. Because, and all the toy products, uh, for example, we have a major four industry in the past. Uh, fashion, toy, garment and electronics. Uh, fashion and toys is more solid uh, to show uh, what we did before. So uh, I think it's very useful when we have our toy museum to educate our new generation. What makes Joel's collection all the more impressive is that Joel himself grew up in relative poverty and didn't buy his first toy until he left university in 1986. For the South China Morning Post, this is Richard Pine.